drugs, illegal drugs, is inside of you right now as I speak. Your whole body shall be full of light, says Jesus Christ, Yahawashai, and the single eye or pineal secretes DMT into the brain. So what does the pineal do? What does it do? The pineal secretes DMT into the human brain. What is DMT? DMT is an illegal hallucinogenic drug called um, dimethyltryptamine, as you can see. DMT is abbreviated as dimethyltryptamine. And that same DMT is in the human brain. Okay. And DMT is an illegal hallucinogenic substance that is in your brain. So it would seem reasonable for us to assume that there is set apart from our three dimensional physical reality. A reality where God dwells and which is only accessible when one transcends the limits of the human brain. This is basically this in no way suggests that one should take drugs of any kind. Because we don't want you brothers and sisters out there taking drugs. Okay, so you don't have to take drugs of any kind. You don't have to take drugs. They are built inside of the human brain. Okay. God has built DMT, dimethyltryptamine, the same psychedelic substance that's found in plants. That's found in psychedelic plants. Okay. <laughs> God has built DMT to the human brain and it is available to take you where you need to go. What most of us do not do is basically consume ourselves in meditation. So brothers and sisters, what you must do is to consume yourself in meditation. And this is something that most people have reluctance to do. So, you already have DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and the human brain. And that is an illegal, that is an illegal hallucinogenic drug. So, you mean to tell me that God built drugs, illegal drugs, in the human brain? He placed illegal drugs in the human brain. Yes, people. Ethiogen. Ethiogen is the scientific name for psychedelic plants. Um, ethiogen. 
is the scientific name for what? Psychedelic plants. Okay, what is psychedelic plants? Psychedelic plants, they are certain plants that gives you hallucinogenic experiences. They are plants that can cause the human uh, that cause the human being to hallucinate, uh, such as mushrooms. Um, that's the ultimate psychedelic plant. You also have other psychedelic plants. Um, we will be going over the mandrakes and so uh, so forth. So psychedelic plants cause you to have psychedelic experiences. Okay, uh, we already know psycho is part of psychedelic that deals with the human brain. So, um, psychedelic plants are also known as ethylgen plants. Uh, psychedelic ethylgen. Ethylgen. What is ethylgen? An ethylgen, in a strict sense, is a psychoactive substance, most often some plant matter with hallucinogenic effects. Those are plants with hallucinogenic effects that cause you to hallucinate, okay? which occasions or supplements a spiritual, mystical experience. So these plants can cause you to uh, go on a, a, a journey that's what? Spiritual or mystical, all right? And in a broader sense, the word ethylgen refers to artificial as well as natural substances which induce alterations of consciousness similar to those documented for ritual ingestion of traditional shamanic embrayance, even if used in a secular context. So ethylgen, we went over that in a previous video, brothers and sisters, dealing with uh, the magic mushrooms that the children of Israel, they ate mushrooms in the wilderness for 40 years. And um, ethylgen, like I said, is consists of two Greek Greek um, terms. You got uh, these two Greek terms makes up ethylgen. The origin of the word ethylgen. Now, I went over this in a video previously before this one, but we would go over this again concerning the word ethylgen. Ethylgen the word ethylgen is derived from the ancient Greek. Um, and theos literally means God. Okay. Because when you uh you go back into the languages, you have uh the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, and the Spanish. Well, we know that in the Spanish language, in the Spanish language, you would say God as theos. So the Spanish language came actually from the Latin language, the Italian language, the Latin language, and the Latin language came from the Greek. So Spanish and, 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 and Latin are similar, which all go back to the Greek. So ethios in Greek um, means literally God, theos. And that's how you would say God in the Spanish. From the Greek to the Latin to the Spanish. Theos, within. So, ethios means God within. More freely translated, inspired. The Greeks used it as a term of praise for poets and other artists. And you also have another term called um, genste. Genste. I want to say that's the correct pronunciation, and it means to generate. So, ethylgen is that which generates God or godly inspiration within a person or to cause God to be within a person. And um, these psychedelic mushrooms, these psychedelic plants, okay, because it's more psychedelic plants than just mushrooms, I like to go over the mushrooms because... When you read about the story in the Bible concerning manna, um, it has a deeper meaning behind it, and it's not actually bread. The manna was actually mushrooms that produced ethylgen. Well, ethylgen in these psychedelic plants 
um, is consists of two Greek words. I just wanted you to see that, which is ethios and right here, gensta. And when you put those two words together, that simply means ethiogen, which caused God to be within a person or to generate uh, or godly inspiration. So why would these plants that produce ethiogen cause God to be within a person? It's just something to think about, man. So the word ethiogen from the ancient Greek meaning um, that which generates God within a person. And what caused God to be within a person? Um, a plant substance which provides halluc hallucination. It's called ethiogen. Plants. There's certain plants out there that provides hallucinogenic experiences that contains ethiogen in the plants, which does what? Which causes God to be within a person or which generates God or godly inspiration within a person. So the Most High, the God of the heavens and the earth, the universe, he created certain plants with hallucinogenic experiences, certain, certain plants that contains ethiogen, Okay, which literally means something that generates God within the person. So you you will see, you see right there that it's nothing wrong with uh, psychedelic plants, consuming psychedelic plants. Okay, it's nothing wrong. I know the government, they want to put out that it's illegal, that it's against the law. But according to God, according to the Bible, according to the heavens, the, the most high, the God that created the heavens and the earth, you can see that it's nothing wrong with plants that cause a person to hallucinate because it actually caused God to be within a person, man. So, um, I just want you to see that concerning the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion was once ethiogen. What is also interesting is that taking the wafer of communion, which is certainly not hallucinogenic experience, was approached differently in earlier times. Yeah, because that wafer which is known as the bread, reflects in biblical times as the manna during the Holy Communion. Because did not um, Jesus Christ, who we know as Yahawashai, did he not say that he was the bread that fell from heaven? Just think about it. He said that he was the bread that fell from heaven. Okay? So the Holy Communion is about Jesus Christ, Yahawashai. Okay, and that wafer reflects on the bread, which that bread goes all the way back to biblical times concerning the manna and the wilderness that the children of Israel were eating. And that was that the manna was also uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms. You can look up, you can look at my video concerning SFIA, 40 years of mushrooms in the wilderness, 40 years of mushrooms. You can look at that video.